Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be putting a brand new map sensor on the GTR. Um, and I figured I would take you along through that process. That way you can see how it would be done if you wanted to convert yours, say from uh, MAF sensors to a map sensor. And show you a little bit of the calibration process and the Haltech ECU. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm going to be using is the, uh, the Haltech 4-bar map sensor that you can get from them. Uh, seems like a pretty high quality product. So, hey, why not? Got a Haltech ECU already. Uh, just make it easy. Um, here's a sensor. Uh, it's just a simple three wire setup and a vacuum source, pressure source. <clears throat> so it knows uh, where to move your, your map around based on that. Some, some connections to, to do your wiring. Um, what I'm going from is just a standard like GM four bar map sensor. Uh, I had, so a little bit of backstory on why I'm doing this replacement. Uh, since I've gone to the single turbo, we went for map over MAF and I had a map sensor failure, uh, but I couldn't quite figure out that exactly is what it was for a long time. <clears throat> so what had happened was I shipped the car from Okinawa up to Aomori Prefecture and uh, the day I got it off the uh, the boat out of the shipping container, I had problems with the car starting and not wanting to stay running. And uh, it would it would start and instantly stop, start and instantly stop. And it was really odd. I couldn't quite figure out what what was going on. But sometimes you you would start it and it would act fine. So I eventually got it to start, act fine. Got down the road and got home but the problem continued intermittently for months i mean probably six seven months um before i got frustrated and finally you know what because because like i say, even even though sometimes it wouldn't start right sometimes it would start acting up while you were driving too you'd just be driving and all of a sudden the thing would go like really stupid lean it would lose power um you give it gas it would go so lean it would stop running basically um which was really dangerous so one day I decided just to hook up my laptop and start data logging everything. And I wasn't really catching it on the data log. Um, but I just happened to have my laptop sitting right here in the passenger seat one day. All the data was open. I was getting ready to crank the car up. And right before I started the car, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that one of the gauges was jumping around kind of sporadically on the display. And I look over at it and it's the map sensor. The map sensor was jumping from like... 50 kPa negative or vacuum up to zero and back and forth like real rapidly. Um, so I put two and two together and what was happening was is the map sensor was reading uh, a pretty strong vacuum uh, or more vacuum than it should have been when the car was running causing it to be in a really really lean uh, part of the, the fuel map hence causing it to run like crap. Same thing with starting it just wasn't enough fuel to keep it running so culprit was gm map sensor bought new four bar gm map sensor and it was t rash um that's what you get for buying cheap shit it was also not spot on in the map um it was actually reading a little bit of vacuum as well when the key was off and you should have zero vacuum or zero pressure so let's get this four bar Haltech unit in, get it calibrated, and see if that fixes the problem for good. All right, so first things first, we got to get this plug sorted. Uh, this plug does not match um, the Haltech map sensor. <clears throat> so basically, we're going to cut this off and splice the new one on. Um, on your auxiliary harness, you're going to have a bundle of wires, these three labeled AVI-1 map. Black is going to be your signal ground. Orange is your 5 volt source, and yellow is also or it's labeled AVI 1, I guess, for that channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these, get this one snipped off. Wire on the new one comes with new connectors for the wires and then the plug. Bad. Sorry for the bad light quality, it's getting dark on me, but the sensor plug replaced. This is a Deutsch style, so you have to put the pins on push them through the back, they snap in, and you put in this orange piece here to lock it all down. <clears throat> they got some pretty good 
instructions here and you can use um, this link, a QR code, you might be able to get that. And it'll give you a link to Haltech's website where they show you how to use these different connectors. So let me get the new sensor and plug it in and then we can see if it will work. All right, first thing I need to do is go into the settings here. Once we get our settings open, we're gonna go to our inputs. And then down here is where the option for onboard pressure sensor is. So if you're gonna run the onboard pressure sensor and the hall tech, you can. And I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna select that as none. So now I get a little red asterisk up here. Let me know, hey, I don't have a source for the map sensor. So back on inputs. Uh, you have to your AVPI one, which is that connection we used before. You're going to activate that manifold pressure sensor two comes up. We can go back over here to the main and change this to manifold pressure sensor two. Okay, we're good. Everything's lined up there. Go back to your inputs map two. Um, this is where we're going to have to adjust for the um, four bar map sensor. So we go to our file there, and then we should be able to find Haltech four bar map sensor here. All right, I didn't see the option for the, the four bar map sensor, Haltech map sensor and the file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and input this stuff manually. So first I'm gonna change voltage it's got to be 0 to 5.0. Okay. And for your pressure, you're going to start 0 is negative uh, 14.4 PSI. <clears throat> and we're going to increase this to 45.7 per the instructions. I don't know if we can see that with that good lighting. Sorry. There you go. 45.7, so right there, 45.7, okay, so that should be set, all right, now that I got that applied, okay, right up here is my map input, and we're put, sitting pretty damn close to dead zero now. Um, the old one, like I said, was bouncing up and down here like crazy. Of course, my settings um, are normally different because they were tuned different. So I'm just going to change it back to what it was set as by my tuner. So again, this was all over the place. And now it's pretty dead, dead still. So I should be able to crank up now and get a good idle. So I'll give it a second to kind of smooth it out. There's also another map uh, bar right here. Know which way you prefer to look at it. Hovering around, say 38, 39 to 40. It's a little bit off from this uh, boost controller, but that thing needs to be recalibrated probably. Um, so this looks pretty good. I'm sorry for this light in here. I'm just sitting in the car. It's dark outside now, but uh, hopefully that process that I just showed you gives you a better idea how easy it is or how easy it can be to make adjustments to things and how to make a change like from math to map sensors or something like that. Now, a lot of the times it can be a lot more involved, uh, especially if you don't know what you're doing or you haven't been through the process yet. So 
I recommend getting online, getting on some forums, getting some support from people who have done it before. Uh, this is exactly what I did. Uh, basically, my car was already done by a tuner, and all I had to do was figure out the process to go in and just recalibrate the new sensor. So it was pretty quite pretty pretty straightforward. Um, not much to it. So, but uh, again, hopefully that you know, gives you a, a little idea of, of what you would need to do in that situation. It's not perfect. When I made that um, segment of how to set up the the calibration and stuff, I, ha I hadn't done it in a while, so it took me a minute to kind of recall how to go through the process, and I had to make some corrections on the screen. I just didn't want to have to go through the process of re-recording everything. So um, if you do have any questions and it was confusing to you, just ask in the comments. I don't mind making, you know, another little side video uh, explaining it a little bit better and then I can even PM you know PM a video to you or something like that um, using messenger or something so um, next up I'm probably going to be installing a Ross uh, idler pulley kit for the power steering pump belt um, I've been having a lot of problems with that popping off now at high rpms um, I think it's mostly due to running an aftermarket balancer that isn't quite lined up with the pump pulley so if you want to see that video, check it out. It'll be up here pretty pretty soon within the next week or so. Hopefully, as long as the weather's good for me here. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, um, like, share, subscribe, comment, give me feedback, positive, negative, I don't care. Um, I'll chat it out, you know, and 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 talk with you about it, and we'll we'll figure out uh, a middle ground somewhere, and and hopefully it can help somebody else. Is the the whole purpose of doing it? So. Um, Looking forward to the, the Ross uh, idler pulley install and uh, make sure you don't miss it. So we'll see you next time.